where I think there's some hope. But the region is stronger in general from for, for the teams from coming from Vietnam into Latin America. So Nova have to play their hearts out to stay in this competition. The Nova Esports Latin America squad will get into this and their ban phase checks out thus far. They ban El Mina. Opposing them, it's Richter Ignis. These have been the standard bands so far in this tournament. Now they have the opportunity to first pick. Yeah, they're going to secure that Lindis Forcer Muster. He shined on that Lindis yesterday. And that's going to be a quick pick. NTV versus uh, uh, NTV and Polo picking up that Valheim Malik immediately. They're so decisive here. I mean, that's the fastest draft pick first phase I've ever seen. Swing Phantom, a very experienced team playing in front of their home crowd and playing into the somewhat unpredictable LATAM meta. It's going to be Raz, it's going to be Yabenas. Yeah, one thing about the Latin America roster is they don't have, um, like, Shaka is playing, but we noticed that their uh, SA overall is not with them. Mengi is playing, so they don't have their star mid laner with them. So that may affect things a little bit here for Nova uh, Latin America. And we see Vietnam has their full roster here. Hone is the one you got to watch out for. He has double digit KDA on his team. The only one on his team with double digit KDA. They have to make sure they do not let him get away and run away in that jungle. The number one thing I was most impressed by from the Nova roster was the synergy between Sir Muster and SA overall. That was actually the reason they decided on the roles they did for the finals without uh, SA overall here to play mid lane for Sir Muster's jungle. It may get messy. We have completed the second phase of the draft. It's going to be that Violet coming through in jungle opposing Sir Muster's Lindis. Second ban phase opens with Roxy and Alistair both being removed. Heavy CC characters knocked out. Yeah, and I'm surprised the Roxy ban is not coming out because uh, that's something that we don't see a lot of. So it looks like they did their homework. Xenio yeah. is a very popular hero that Nova Latin plays as well. This is um, and this we actually target didn't bans. see a lot of Xenio play. This is target bans because these these last few bans are not bans that are played in the Vietnamese meta. So I feel this is definitely uh, Swing Phantoms doing their work, finding out what Nova like to play and banning it out here. And that may actually play to Nova's favor because remember, they've been aggressively reinventing their draft phase over the last few weeks. Uh, when they were at the uh, Valor Series finals, they had Jay Jesse, the EU coach, doing it with them. I think that may play to their benefits because they don't draft like old Nova. Yeah, and that definitely helped them win the Latin America Championship. It was because of the draft, but Nightlight is now drafting for them. Mm -hmm. Jay Jesse is not up there with the team. Nightlight is one of the managers for Nova. And the draft is going to be so critical here. Natalia, like I said, this is, I called it. Look, the crowd is cheering. They know, they know what's up here. This is Vietnam's signature mid lane mage here. The way they play Natalia is just on another level of region wise and a lot of the players have commented about Vietnam's Natalia and Grack? Grack? What? Grack oh, is actually coming out here. I like because this. Because you want to deny the Grack. You don't want to give Vietnam Grack. If yeah. you take Grack Natalia, you're in big trouble. You need the Grack because you don't want to face into Grack Natalia. However, you also are facing against a series of more static characters. If you can land a pull onto the Valheim, land a pull onto the Violet, land a pull onto the Natalia, you have low mobility characters whom you can punish. This is a great final draft for me. For Nova Latam, if they can make the comp work, I think they have exactly the tools they need to punish the squishier, lightweight damage presented by Swing Phantom. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, they're gonna have to watch. There's a lot of burst from Natalia and the Violet with the stuns coming out from the Valheim and the Malik, that's going to be a, a nice combo. So they have to be careful. Like I said, you know, Vietnam just knows how to play Natalia really well. It's kind of like their trump card they pull out if they get target banned for, for May. You notice Liliana's banned, Alistair's banned, Ignis is banned, and then they take the Raz away. And then, like I said, they probably will pull out the Natalia, and that's going to be exciting to watch. We'll have to see if 
changes come through as Nova are facing into an expected favourite here. Swing Phantom, if they weren't already a terrifying team, which they are, are playing with the home crowd advantage. Nova Latam are the second Latam team to play in world competition. Of course, Pain Gaming flamed out during the group stage of the AWC earlier this year. This is an opportunity for redemption for the region and a chance to show how much they've grown. Yeah, and this is their chance to shine. Can Sir Muster carry his team to victory? Because he is the star. Shaka, one of actually the best support in Latin America. 08, an, an assassin playmaker. Will he be able to work with Sir Muster? And also finally, Min Munji. He was on the squad before. Can Munji really show up and fill the shoes of SA overall here? and help Nova stay in this competition because if they lose this series, they are out. Their AIC, AIC dreams will be over. And look at the crowd, so much support for Swing Phantom here. They look at the drums beating away TJ. This is awesome. <laughs> hey, look, I know we're doing this from home, but if I could get one of those drum guys just like here in the corner of my garage, that'd be pretty sick. I don't know if we have room in the budget for that, but I'd be down. Swing Phantom yeah. will be getting into game now. Like you said, Nova Esports Latin America did uh, lose their game yesterday. That's why all it takes is one more loss for them to be out of the AIC. However, I felt they stepped up yesterday, so maybe a little bit more of that, a little bit less of the losing. They have an opportunity to make yeah. this. Oh, very zero close eight is going indeed. to be jungling. We saw this actually in Latin America during the regular season. Sir Muster would play the side lane, and zero eight would jungle. So this is this is a, a, a little different. And we know Sir Muster played like Zuka side lane so well here, but he's on the Zephys. Ready, strong pressure through Polo needs to play this safe as Adol and Sir Muster are in the front lines. Adol should be able to get out here. He's got the advantage of the Abedit, but he stays too long. And first blood is secure. Swing Phantom will continue to chase forward. Now they want this Sage Golem, and there's not a whole bunch Nova Esports can do about it. Shaka's hook does go wide, and Sir Muster's lucky to get away alive. Oh my god, that was just insane. The way that they just responded and immediately collapsed the rotation against Nova and countered that jungle invade. And one thing I noticed with Nova is Sir Muster was focusing the red buff and he should have just auto attacked the person that was next to his allies. I feel like if they continue to put out the DPS in that very first engage, they may have came out ahead because it's going to come down to who's going to out poke and out damage the other team more in that very first rotation. And I felt like they weren't outputting enough DPS, but Vietnam was the one aggressing constantly. And then they had a five man rotation and it was lights out for Nova there for that rotation. So really good response by Vietnam there. Very good response indeed. It's a strong open from them. And Nova Latin America now need to stabilize, worry about the first major abyssal. And you can see Swing Phantom are doubly focused on the gold game. They instantly four-man rotate for the Spirit Sentinel. Now they're going to push down as best they can to contest for the uh, abyssal. Yeah, you notice every top team does that. They're, they just, like clockwork, they take river control, and then they exert pressure onto this dragon. And you notice Natalia Blake is level four. The lethal death race is up. And they're not going to use it here to secure it, but they have to be careful here because, look, he's looking for a fight. He's out poking Menji here and getting a pretty low. Like I said, the way they play Natalia, TJ, is just so fun to watch. And Natalia is a hero that um, you have to respect from Vietnam here. The hook will land. Polo pulled out by the Devil's Chains. Unfortunately, that's the Jognar. He can take that hit and walk away with it. Now Sir Muster's overextended. There are the Valhide stuns. And another free kill over to Swing Phantom. Yeah, and when that happens, they, they have to not try oh, to... Get that's good. Blake Ooh. won. Their star player will get out. Lethal Rays does land. Adol tries to sustain. He can only keep himself alive and not for long. Redwood rush to get to safety. The branching out goes wide. He'll chase Blake as best he can, but the Arcane Nova keeps him static. Nobody will go down for Swing Phantom. That was a perfect recovery. 
Man, and the crowd goes wild, TJ. Like I said, that was a crazy lethal death race. He activated just in the nick of time. It gave him the barrier. It basically makes Natalia immune to CC when that barrier is up. And he landed a three-man hit with the lethal death race, turning that two versus three completely around and securing these kills. And look at this rotation falling up here. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh They're on a roll. Goodness is right. That is a devastating. Oh my god, an even more devastating start. And Swig Phantom by three more kills over the course of the last few minutes. They'll challenge for this mid lane now. Mangi needs to hold all alone. He's got Sir Master for clear, but that's it. Yeah, they, like I said, every time. So Natalia out pushes the lane, and then they rotate to your jungle, and instantly just takes all your jungle really fast. But look, the Raz is able, Mangi is able to steal that creep away. There and look, the blue buff is up, and they're right on it, TJ. They have the timer right on it, and they take it just like that. This another, is a signature rotation from Team Vietnam here. Another easy pick up there for Team Vietnam. Star Master will try and find a response. They've got Polo down. Remember, if there's one thing you can rely on a LATAM team to do, it's keep fighting, keep taking fights, keep creating opportunities. I'm not sure if that's going to be a strength or a weakness in international play, but it's at least different. <laughs> a stall yeah, out. but they're shutting out Sir Muster. I mean, like, the Valheim is doing such a good job. NTB is doing such a good job shutting down Sir Muster in that one jungle invade here. And they're going to secure the second Abyssal Dragon as well. Look at that four-man, five-man rotation to the Abyssal Dragon lane. We noticed that the top teams are doing this. They're, they are constantly putting so much emphasis on. And look at the poke combo they're doing. The way that they're playing like one unit, the way that they're yeah. just focusing and dishing out this damage, it's like one person controlling five people. I the, mean, the, just amazing how well Swing Phantom is playing right now. Yeah, the macro from them was insane. They were able to bring a five-man unit to all of the early team fights, and then this second there's no coordinated threat from Nova, they somehow know they split up, they play the map. Yeah, exactly, and this is why Nova they have to be very careful. They have to secure their towers, like Adol is doing a good job using Nature's Realm there to clear up that wave to make sure that they minimize the damage on that tower. So can, they cannot lose towers here. They have to make sure they keep farming because they are down six kills and 4,000 gold at this point. And they're gonna give up another Abyssal Dragon. There's the Abyssal Dragon picked up, Adol caught out. Arcade Nova comes through. Again, the tree is felled. And Swing Phantom are in control, 7 to nil in the kill feed. Yeah, this is just devastating. Again, the rotations, like I said, in the mid-game, TJ, Nova just constantly gets caught out rotation-wise, and then they try to fight. They're just such an aggressive team, but they need to take the fights that they know they can win and give up the fights that they're going to lose and just trade instead. Because if you're behind and you're fighting a team that's ahead of you into what they want you to do is to fight them, you're going to continue to fall behind even further, and that's not what you want to happen. Shaka will be cooled down here. Knocked down a bit. There's a nice pull, though. NTB locked in. They will have a full up. World Devour just lands on to three. Sir Buster in. That's two more. They have the kills. Polo very low as well. The lethal race does not do enough. It is an almost complete team wipe, and Nova Esports are back in the game. Yeah, that was insane, that follow-up, that combo. Honestly, Shaka made it happen with that World Devour. The pull, the flicker, World Devour, and then the Menji goes in with the flicker, the executes, gets him in. Everything just worked perfectly for Nova there. That's exactly what they need to do. They need to combo to win, and they have shown us why they can compete with the top teams across the world here and nova showing up like they did yesterday but can they close this game out though that's what i'm really asking what am i watching Sui? <laughs> i was i was done i thought nova latap were out in this game and then somehow someway they find the first perfect cc combo their team coordination has never looked better and it's a clean team fight in the bot lane now swing phantom are all of a sudden playing relatively passive across the map yeah, so they play around the crack. They get these nice double chains in there, right? And they leverage the Abenet with he can use branching out. He can then CC them again, and then you have the Zephy step from above. They can do that again if they do it properly. And then you can flicker in and use War Devourer exactly how Shaka did it. Wait for that flicker to come back up and re-engage there because 
if they keep up these combos, they have a chance to get back. But Vietnam is not scared. Dream Don't. Phantom is continuing to just take objectives. Oh, and Adol takes that dragon, TJ. Oh my goodness. And they have Polo down low as well. Sir Buster will dive hard. That's another major peg. Sir Buster is low, but they still are making to take the front lines. He's got low HP. Devil's Chains will not land. Blake is stalled out by it, though. They have to play scared because of Shaka and Latin Americans. Nova Esports are still in this game. They're totally in this game. You notice how Menji's doing. He's doing such a good job with Raz. I think Raz is, is a pretty good uh, mage into Natalia because he's so flexible with fancy footwork. He can dance around the lethal death race and not get hit by it. And that's a very solid pick there. I think they ban specifically there to allow Vietnam to go ahead and play in Natalia so that they can play this Raz into it and just dance around all of her skill shots. And that was only possible, that steal was only possible because Polo was pulled out of guard position. They landed the Devil's Chains onto him and because of that there's nobody to stop Adolf from just walking up and poking it with his stick. Yeah, right now, TJ, they're just 1,000 gold behind. It is almost 10 minutes. This is growing so well for Nova Latin America. It is the best we've seen them so far. They are here to fight. They are here to stay alive. They are here to keep the Latin America hopes alive because they are not representing just Nova. They're representing their entire region. So they have to come out of this alive here because Vietnam has three teams representing in the AIC. Latin America only has one. So they are the last and only hope for Latin America. Well, I will say this. He didn't just steal the abyssal. He stole my heart as well. <laughs> Swing Phantom are, are still in control of the game, most. They still have a gold lead. Yeah, they do have the gold lead. It's a five man fight now in the. Oh, and look at that pull coming out. Shock will land. Nice lethal raise. Adolf very low. A double kill found in the front line. Sir Buster will dive on. Desperately trying to find a trade, and he cannot. Very low HP on him. He needs to escape. In the meantime, 08 does trade back. Polo goes down. Sir Buster onto NDP is narrowly shut down by the ultimate, and 08 is still hunting. This could be oh close. If he can goodness. find NDP, he can get this kill and keep Nova from losing too much ground. Yeah, that was massive. That fight was crazy, TJ. Back and forth, the Malik ultimate, the Ben of Nature's Realm. So many ultimates and CC came up, but Blake was the one that secured a lot of the kills early. And then uh, Sir Muscle was able to turn around and 08 stayed alive that fight. That's why Nova was able to stay in there, but they still do not do not get a positive trade from this. They lose the dragon and that's not what they want. Now they're behind almost 3,000 gold. But it started with the initiation from Shaka with that Devil's Chain there. They have to focus the person that he pulls because uh, that is where Grack shines, is you force your opponent to respond to that pull. And they, they need to not split focus because that last fight, how they initiated, they actually split the focus a little mm -hmm. bit. And as a result, you know, they, they could have gone ahead, but they did not. And it does feel like they need to deal with Blake before he gets that lethal raise off or immediately after he does. Yeah, and, and I feel like they, they need to combo. Like I said, the, the Grack just works so well. You get a pull, you can activate Word of R, you can save the Word of R, but you have Zephyr's Zeph Zeph death from above, you have Ebeneth branching out, right? You have the Redwood Ward, he can push them back into uh, his team once that person's pulled. You have the Raz can also push that, push that person even further away from his team. There's a lot of combo potential that Nova can do it, and they need to execute it. I mean, I think that's the only way to win the next fight here, because if they play into the the, the CC um, and the AoE damage of the Malik and the Natalia here and the Violet, they're going to lose. Because you, if you bunch up against a Violet, she will literally blow up your entire team, and that's, and that's exactly what you do not want to do against a Natalia-Violet composition, because they can easily play and, and play front to back in team fights here and win every fight if they do that. So Nova cannot play into that. Shaka and Zero Eight are still playing so defensive for this Nova roster. I would have really liked to see them try and take a little bit more map control because it feels like Swing Phantom are kind of bullying them out of a lot of jungle right now that they don't need to be. Yeah, let's see what the rotations will be like from Nova. They're not pressuring out one lane. One, lane, The bottom lane is kind of equal right now, but they need to pressure out one lane. Oh, shock. And look at this. Lethal lane. raise. Shock is down early. That does not bode well. Nova will seed the mid tower. tower 
Yeah, that was insane. The shock ultimate there from Zero, along with Natalia's lethal death rays, that was insane. Blake and the synergy there with that combo was so awesome to see. Langston's round will be spent. Adol zoning people back. There is the Chaos Protection in response. Zeref actually quite low. He has to shock to safety and Sir Master thinks about hunting, but the lethal raise Ooh. knocks him so low in an instant. Yeah, the way that he's using the Arcane Nova, that orb is just basically completely um, uh, zoning out the enemy there. It just... Mm -hmm. Again, this Natalia play from Blake One is just so awesome to see. It, like, makes her so viable and competitive to play the way he's playing it. I mean, he's landing every single Arcane Spirit. The Arcane Nova is using to zone people out, and then the Lethal Death Rate is constantly comboed with his allies there when they uh, land a heavy CC. I'd like to point out though, uh, Zero Eight is currently the most farmed player in this game. He's currently a solid uh, 9k ahead of anyone on either team. They need to leverage him. They need to bring this Lindis to the front lines. Yeah, they definitely need to bring this Lindis to the front line. And 08 is the key to the team. If he if he dies first in the fight, oh, it's over. And Blake, look at that engage. Blake is the focus. We called that. And Sir Master finds a massive burst of damage scaring him back. This gives Nova a little bit more room to work with. Yeah, definitely gives Nova some room to work because the next fight is going to determine who is going to take the lead here because if they win the next fight and they get an ace or four man kill nova can get back right into the game take an objective like the dark slayer and then and then continue to push more towers here and that's exactly what they need to do both teams know that how critical the next rotation and fight is and nova has the luxury to play around and dance around mm -hmm. them because again they have crack they can easily get one pull all they need is one pull and then they combo with that pull can put them into a five versus four situation almost immediately. We'll see if that puts an awful lot of threat on Shaka. We'll see if Shaka can make this happen. And he does manage to miss a pull there. Polo would have I framed it with his chaos uh, protection anyway, so it doesn't matter, but that is unfortunate. Sir Master will go in, poke on Polo with the death from above. No major chase. There's a nice pull. Zero eight, very low, does flicker to safety. Oh. Essence of the wind keeps him up. Yeah, that was insane. What a great essence of the win, but that pull, like I said, that's exactly what he needed to do. But 08 flickering to safety. He, as long as he stays alive, Nova's dreams and hopes are alive with that Lindis. And now they need to pressure, they need to take yeah. jungle, they need to convert this into objective. They need to take the Dark Slayer at this point. Or actually, I, they should take the Enrage Abyssal Dragon, but they need to do something with this kill. Yes. They have to do something with this kill. They must make progress, and Sir Master is the only player it feels like playing aggressive right now. They are clearing wave up top. I think they're really quite eager to look for a tower. Yeah, they are eager, and this is perfect here. Like I said, this is awesome because if you're the team that's behind, then Rage of Pistol Dragon is almost always better than the Dark Slayer because it gives you that team-wide team fight buffs, you know? And look at that, Fenrir's Tooth has just been finished on Sir Muster. And this is full build. A lot of the team members are full build. This is insane here. The next fight is going to be everything. Both NTV and Zaraf do have Blades of Eternity, the Resurrect available. Over on the Swing Phantom, and Zareth will be needing it as the focus comes through. He'll spend shock defensively. That's quite good! That's quite good indeed! Swing Phantom does make the opening phase of the fight. Adol still commits. Shaka did hold strong in the back lines, but they did not get enough damage. It is only hard to fall. Zero Eight still stays up, and that is enough. Because of the damage he found, it's going to have to be a retreat from Swing Phantom. And despite losing more players, Nova are going to get the tower at the end. Yeah, and that's the key there. If Zero Eight stays alive, they will win the fight because he is full build and Hone is their damage move. If they take out the Violet first every single time like this, they are in a great position to then exert pressure because Lindis is just so fed. Both Violet and Lindis are completely full build along with Valheim. Valheim is actually the second most fed in the game after Zero Eight here. So now what? It's gonna come down to both drafts are pretty even. Violet would be more has the more upper hand because mm -hmm. of the damage. She needs to sell the stabby though, and replace it with Fenrir's tooth or something else because the, she is lacking in damage. You can see zero eight just sell his Gilded Greaves, and he might buy Bait of Affinity here because it's gonna give him that revive and that extra uh -huh. ten percent damage. I, oh, he's gonna actually rebuy the 
He would agree if that's very interesting. I'm, I'm, so. I'm blown away by the fact that this duo, Shaka and Zero Eggs, is enough to make an entire team fall back. Here's another chance. There's the pole landed again. Polo, World of Power will come through. Nature's Realm's not enough. The Lethal Race does burn down Shaka. That's the tech, though. You can still make this work. Aid all over extends. Does go down. The trade's there for Zareth. Sir Master will hard commit. And TB's his focus. And he's barely able to disengage. The stuns are still here to chase. And it is a narrow Ooh. escape. Man, that was insane. NTB had the Blade of Affinity. He revised, but the damage, the burst from Zero Eight with that Lunar Champion was so much damage. He has a Blitz Blade of Fafnir's Tan. Not even on the arms, actually. Clap Sanctum Muramasa. Just a very interesting Lindus Builder. Lots of attack speed and uh, lifesteal from the, uh, the Blitz Blade that it gives her and also the Rank Breaker. So the key now is how is Natalia going to make a difference? Because Blake 1 has not been able to do much in these fights, actually. And the key is if Natalia can land a clutch lethal death rate against Nova and delete one or two heroes immediately, then they might be able to secure this game. It's going to come down to the last fight because both these teams are so even. Even though they have a gold lead, it doesn't matter because most of the teams are pretty much full build. I'd like to point out that I feel like every hook shark has landed has been onto Polo. Oh, he misses. That's huge. Yeah, that's a big miss indeed. Polo will spend Chaos Protection though, and NTB scooped out from it, but the kill cannot be found. Hard now under threat. There's a good Devil's Chains. That found the kill. Sir Monster with two. There's the flicker. World Devour. Black Fools. Hard Fools. Now the esports are doing it. Their tower's under threat in the high ground, but it will not matter if they can clean this up. And they have another double kill and another dominant fight to Nova Esports. That was insane there. Sir Muster misses that from That was Vietnam's chance. That was Swing Phantom's chance to go in there, but they didn't. And as a result, he got it off cooldown. And then you notice he went in there and got onto the back line and landed it on Hoon. And if Hoon gets knocked by Death from Above, it's over. Zephyrs is so good into Violet because of that CC that he's able to provide. And they instantly kill oh, Hoon there. Hey, and what result, on earth is this fight. madness? He just flickered underneath the tower, and that was enough. It scares NTB back, and the first high ground to fall is swing phantoms yeah and then sir muster again got the kill he carried literally the entire fight there the way he played the zephys he actually got the kill on blake as well blake actually missed and whiffed the lethal death rate sir muster actually danced around him and attacked him from the other side the other angle and that's exactly what you want to do so what a beautiful engage and look at that everyone is full build sir muster has so much damage i mean look at him. he has frost cape but he has spirit long genius he has a uh, friend here's two, the Blade of Infinity, and the Soul Reaver. Man, this guy is a monster late game Zephy's build here. It's pretty squishy, so oh they have goodness. to take care of Zephy's. If Swing Phantom does not focus their muster or 08, they're going to lose the next fight. And they have not yet. 08 charming in for extra damage on Polo, the tankiest player on the map, perhaps getting knocked very low in the opening phase. Here's the tower, second high grab under threat. It too will fall. The Drake plus 08 is just so much damage. There's no way for Swing Phantom to stop it. Yeah, this is just insane how things have turned for Nova Latin America. Just a few Grack engages with those pulls and it's Sir Mustard landing these clutch deaths from above onto the back line. If they get continue to, to knock Hoon down every single time, oh then goodness. this would be Nova's game to win. Leaving Shaka and Menji in the front lines while the rest of Nova, Adol and Zero Eight in particular, focus down this enraged Abyssal Dragon. It'll take a while to farm, but they have Swing Phantom so bottled up right now. It's not even a risk. They'll gently seed ground Finally letting them out of their bases, maybe for an instant Swing Phantom begin to put together what's going on, and it is too late. It is too late. They have the both the buffs here, and this is Nova's chance to end the game. The key here is they have to keep vision on Sir Muster. If Zephy's, if you don't know where Zephy's is, you need to back off, and you need to protect the Violet. You just have to protect Boon. And that's the key there. And Sir Monster's job is to sneak. You notice his positioning. He's always adjacent mm -hmm. and trying to flank. 
that's exactly what you want to do with Zephyrs because you want to get onto the back line because Hoon does not have any defense at all. Like one combo from Zephyrs with that build can insta kill the Hoon. Oh, Zeref, that's actually quite good. Shark in the front lines is burnt down. Benji does fight damage. Shark against the World Tower. Hey, all in with the branching out. It might not be enough, but Zero Eight plays so well. Sir Buster will survive. I don't know how, but Nova live through a disastrous fight. That was insane, and they didn't have... Nova had the Enrage and Bissell Dragon buff. That was a beautiful engager. As the Devil Chain comes out, the Malik Shock Ultimate comes out and lands on the entire team. And then Hoon is protected from the behind. He was not focused at all. He's able to get so much damage out, securing the kill on Nova Latin America and winning the game there. And Sir Muster was so close to falling. And also 0-8 was really low as well. Hoon actually was able to land a few shots onto 0-8. And I felt like if he continued to aggress, he probably could have killed Lindis. And that could have been literally the game for them so this could not be closer tj these fights are just insane to watch right now every single ability and every single shot matters and because latin america nova was not able to focus down the violet uh hoon's violet they lost that fight they have to focus down violet and the blade of attorney is bought for blake here which means he's gonna have extra survivability along with hoon as well has the blade of infinity as well 24 minutes into game. Nova, or Max build across the board. Good hook landed. Shaka onto Zeref, but Zeref survives it all. That's not exactly the ideal target. Now he'll ult in, and it goes wide. That might be an overcommit. Sir Master is tagged down to half HP, but Zeref will be the first to fall with some nice play by Mengi. Sir Master is just here for poke. Swing Phantom need to retreat. Yeah, that was a huge misplay by Zeref there. He just went out of position completely. And that's the, some little miscommunication from it, from uh, Spring Phantom. We don't, we haven't seen them play like this in the early game. They were just so coordinated, so on top of it. But they're starting to tilt. They're starting to maybe get nervous or anxious. I don't know what it is, but they are nervous. You can tell. Uh, right now, that he's smiling. Right now, Nova looks more focused. They are just trying to communicate. But look at the burst. Good poke they, on zero they, they, but no, no kill found, and that is the key target. They need to kill 0-8. Yeah, but Munji, Munji is doing so much damage on this res as well. That, pow that constant power surge is doing so much burst and poke as well. So as long as he can get onto one of the targets here, it's going to come down to who is more decisive, like who is going to engage better and harder to delete one of the key carries right off the bat. We're at max build. There's no point farming anymore. It's just a stalling game for the major of buffs. Or an opportunity to take a major fight. Zero eight might be called out actually. The shockwave almost tags him. Now the shock will come through. It's a flicker to safety. Shocker, world devours in anticipation, but the chaos protection is there to deny. Oh, Sir Muster is pushing top is he here. He has the damage. He, he can potentially he finish it, but yeah, he can. He can. It's too risky. It's too risky for him. Instead. But Nova sit back. They're going to look for this major objective. The Dark Ooh. Slayer is the first to rise. Mm, Hoon is such a smart build. He has Death Sickle and Blade of Affinity. That means he can. He has two shots at life. The Death Sickle will protect him from the last hit that could kill him, and then Blade of Affinity will revive him when he does fall after Death Sickle goes into effect here. This is the this Dark is Slayer a risky. Swing Phantom will be stalled out. Zero Eight abandons the Slayer. Shot from Zero will come through. Sir Buster barely dodges. Zero Eight focusing the Slayer all the while. Paolo will charge through. There's a nice lethal raise landed. Zero Eight survives. Essence of the wind from Shaka is perfect. Now Sir Buster dives in. Hot will survive. He kites well. Adol does as well. Zero Eight will fall. Swing oh. Phantom scraping out the fight. Sir Buster just needs to run. Instead he recommits and will Will find damage. Only Adol survives oh against four goodness. players. The crowd is going nuts, TJ. You saw the Death Sickle kick into gear for Hoon, and then the oh, Blade of Infinity as well. That build may have saved the day, and they're going to end here. They're pushing. They're going to end this game. The Tyre's going to go back and take care of the top um, wave pushing here, but this is their chance. They're potentially end this game because Hoon, this is Adol way too much damage. To save it. Nature's Realm, just for the wave clear. All the while, NTB dives. Swing, Phantom, scrape it out with a last second victory over Nova East. Sports.
that was so insane. And like I said, that build TJ was so smart. He knew that he could not avoid Sir Muster. Sir Muster knew he had to focus on Violet. He landed the death from Sir Muster did everything that he could, but you notice that that sickle kicked in, then the Blade of Infinity kicked him, and because Hoon survived and 08 fell, that was GG for Swing Phantom. I mean, just for not. And this is tells you every little thing matters. You can see they are devastated by this loss here. They cannot believe they just lost that game because they know how important it is for them to stay alive. They have to stay alive. They lose the next game. They are done. Their AIC dreams and hopes are over. That is devastating because Nova Esports were in control, I would say, even of that fight. And Zero Eight on the Lindis was still split focus. He was he was attacking the Dark Slayer in the middle of a game ending fight. You cannot be doing that. Yeah, exactly. And in, in Valheim actually <laughs> was able to do so much damage against Zero Eight there. And they actually won that 2v2 trade on the backside of that fight because Hoon honestly was focusing Adol. He was focusing the tanks and trying to get the kill on Sir Muster. And Sir Muster was able to get away. So Violet was actually not a big part of the damage in terms of focusing it onto Zero Eight. So Zero Eight actually lost to the Valheim in the back line. That was just an amazing fight that happened there on the backside. And then Hoon was able to survive because of his item build. Sir Muster falls, even though Sir Muster has Blade of Infinity, he revives and just falls, and that was game. That was it right there. After they had four kills, it was game over, and Swing Phantom knew that they had that game because the respawn timers were just way too long. That was one of the closest games of AOV I've ever seen. Let's take a moment and take a look at why. Incredibly, to me, I'd like to highlight exactly how well Shaka did. No, it might not have been apparent, but he had a ton of hooks that were spent uh, very intelligently, constantly making sure Swing Phantom couldn't get in good position, and his world devourers were insane. His assists were... Yeah. <laughs> they, th that's what it turned around. Fight. That that bottom lane world devourer, TJ, really, it makes you immune um, from a last hit that could kill you, and it gives you immunity for a, a good s a second, which is a significant amount of time. And he also had Blade of Infinity on top of the pilot as well. So selling the boots is actually very smart late game. And that's something that I wish Zero Eight did as well. Because boots are not useful as, as much in the late game. Uh, because all that matters is the damage and being able to revive and come back into the fight. We are into a draft phase for game number two. Swing Phantom scrape out a game one victory. Now the question is, can you manage to keep your heads in the game? And the answer thus far is no. Richter comes Ooh, through the draft. Richter. That is so, oh my goodness. Why did they let Richter through? That, That's just insane. That's just so scary. They literally gave Richter over to a Southeast Asia team. Oh my goodness. I hope Nova has an answer to the Richter. We've seen only a few instances of Richter thus far, and none of them absolutely none of them have been pretty latin america letting richter through during one of their draft phases they played the richter and lost maybe that's influencing their decisions here they do have the violet they do have the mina still on the cards because that target bans uh for lindis and valheim they want the raz though yeah they definitely want the raz mina getting picked up means you need to deny chognar um that's so risky to pick Mino when Chognar is up. I feel like that's not the smartest thing to do because because we saw them play Chognar last game. We saw Polo on that Chognar. So they're just going to pick a Chognar and completely negate the Mina. So I feel like that's a very risky draft to do there um, because they can just pick up, for example, uh, Chognar and potentially uh, secure like Valheim or something. And, and that gives them two very powerful side laners in Richter and Valheim. So let's see if Malik might be picked up as well. Malik was was very um, performed very well on Seraph, so they may go after the the Malik Chognar again, which is what they ran. Yep, that's going to be it. And they should pick Chognar because they did, ooh they're not. If they don't pick Chognar here, it's going to be banned, and that's going to give Nova Latin America a chance here because with Mina, if Mina doesn't face a Chognar, it's really a good win condition for her. I would be astonished if that Chognar did not show up. But like you said, the ban phase is open.
a lot now if I can do with it. Now I'm looking for their jungle. I want to see their jungle locked in before we get into the second van phase. They do have a lot of options. I would like them to take the Violet away from Han because of how effective it was. Yeah, with Linus being banned, Violet is very good. But remember, Crick Deck's also open. You can also do Crick Deck with the with the Mina. Crick Deck Mina is is actually super nasty composition. But it's a little scary because Malik and Ibaneth are just such a good front line and such a good peel and defense as well. And they can really punish the Crick Knight if he goes in. But they may That's smart opt too. for Crick Knight. But I think 08 prefers to play Marksman. So they may try to secure the Violet for him here. They have to make a decision soon, though. This is smart too, though. Oh. Getting the Roxy for the sideline is actually, uh, I, I think, one of the coolest things they could have done here. And I'm ashamed I didn't spot it. Because if there is one character that might be able to shut down a Richter, it would be a Roxy. Yeah, yeah. Richter cannot really dodge the Agni's grabs. It's basically, if it lands on you, you're done. You're, you can't really get out of it. So that's going to be very important here. And, and they need to ban away um either uh natalia or um they can try to deny the violet um because this violet. is yep that's gonna be denied but violet natalia i think back. deserves it deserves a ban here because of how well they played the violet or um or they can take honestly uh yeah, Alistair being banned here, that means Valheim is already banned. So what makes sense for them could be another side laner that they could be a little worried about. Yeah, we'll see if that works out. The last ban again target, the Xenial goes through. This gives options now. What do we see in the jungle for Nova? They do have, once again, still some ranged characters available. Nova ran Fennec several times during the regular season. We could see a Fennec. We could see a Slims coming through on Sir Master. He also played Morin. There's a lot to pull out, but I want it to be ranged because I think that's the only way they succeed. And they agree. The Slims comes through. Yeah, and Slims is, works pretty well because he has that flying spear that stuns. And now, you know, they... they the, uh, the What... Uh, Swing Phantom can play is uh, they can honestly just pull in a um, wow Zill is gonna come out Liliana is an obvious pick here so Nona Tyler will show up with Liliana and Zill that's a lot of magic damage so no one can counter build against the insane magic burst that Zill and Liliana will output that's a lot of magic damage, and I don't really agree with the Zill into this matchup either, because there are so many high HP characters that can just deny them. So I'm very happy to see them switch away from that Zill towards a Fennec, because Swing Phantom could not have run a melee assassin into a Mina Roxy Raz. Yeah, that is very risky. So Fennec will be picked up here, which is an interesting pick. Um, no Natalia, but Richter again. They have very strong uh, side laners. They're going to uh, side lane the Malik, and Ibeneth is going to be the tank. This is why Ibeneth is so good, because he can flex side lane or in the support tank position. So the last pick now, they need to secure the last side laners. The options that they have here could be Superman, if they play it, Arjun. We have seen some Arjun show up as well. Marja is still open. Marja is sometimes is banned. So we could see a Marja being picked up here. Um, because she gives so much pressure in the side lane. She would actually outlane the Richter, actually, because of the sustain that she has. So let's see if they do end up picking that Marja. Um, but it doesn't really combo as well with the Mina. And Marja will show up. But one thing that Marja shines, though, is if Mina gets a nice Dark Dominion, the AoE damage from Marja is a lot. She can spam her abilities and do a lot of AoE damage and give her so much sustain in the fight. You've seen the draft, Sui. I'm gonna make you make a call now. You've, you've, you have, I'm gonna give you a moment to think about it. You have the drafts. Nova Esports are on the brink of elimination. Do they stay alive? Yes, I think they can do it. Their draft is better because there's no Chognar to counter the Mina. Even though Swing Phantom has Richter, Marja is great into Richter because she's a ranged mage and Richter is a melee. 
so she can easily out push him and out sustain him and that's going to give them top lane pressure to allow them to rotate and contest and get objective so that's going to be key here Sports coach and I'd like a little bit late to the stage. You do have to shake hands <laughs> even in a match as intense as this. We have one more opportunity for Nova Latam. A strong showing game one. Now an opportunity to prove it wasn't a fluke. An opportunity to save their region's dreams and redeem their region in a performance in the AWC. Yeah, the key now is how the ghost walk is done. They need to play like how uh, MTS from AOG does it. Ghost Walk is used offensively and it damages nearby enemies when she exits and enters Ghost Walk. So if Marjo is able to get in there, cast Soul Devour, Dark Post, Ghost Walk on top of the enemy team, and then Ghost and cast more abilities, and then Ghost Walk on top out of the and exit Ghost Walk on top of the enemy team, that is a massive amount of AoE damage. That, that's how MTS plays Marja. The best Marja players play aggressively like that and that's going to determine if this Marja pick is going to pay off for Nova Latin America here. One more opportunity for Latam. They have the Marja, they have, as you said, a very good draft. You actually said Nova have the better draft. We'll see if the video game agrees. We're into it, game number two. A last chance for Nova and the Latam region. It is definitely the last chance here, but the home crowd is supporting Swing Phantom. They're so energetic, TJ. I love the crowd there. And even online and YouTube, there's 85,000 concurrent viewers on the, the Vietnamese YouTube channel here. So they're supporting their home team very well. It's not a contest. <laughs> I'm just saying the ALG games didn't get that. Zeref will push forward already in the bottom lane. NTV up top, Swing Phantoms putting NTV after a stellar performance game one on the Valheim over to the Richter. It's 0 8 on Roxy, who needs to shut that down. Yeah, this is scary a little bit for me here. The Marja losing to Malik is actually very bad. Um, Malik also has Purify. That's very interesting. So he basically is going to counter the Roxy. I don't know if you guys know this, but you can purify out of a Roxy, Roxy's Agni's grabs. So he's going to basically stand in front of his carries and never, ever allow uh, the Roxy to land an Agni's grabs on his carries. Purify also works against Mina's uh, Dark Dominion. So it's very smart of Xerath to prioritize uh, the, uh, the purify there in this melee. And he played so well during that first game. You could time and time again see Zara finding the opportunities for his team, finding the shots they grounded his team the victory. Love to see if that performance can be repeated. Yeah, the crowd is just getting excited off every single engage. They're just like, you can hear them in the background. This is going to be a hype of a match here. And right now, both teams are pretty even, but Swing Phantom is just more efficient at farming the gold right now because they have a slight lead. Poke. There's a dragon under threat, and there's the... Oh, chain hammer cyclone, but it doesn't matter! It's a hard dive onto Nova! Shock will come through! Zarif underneath tower, that is too far, surely! Adol should find the trade, but he can't quite do it! And it's two kills with no response to Swing Phantom! Yeah, that was a crazy game. Look, and NTB again, the way he engaged, he played the same with, with Raha, now with Richter, going in there, securing the kill, and then Zeroth turned level four. You, he used Purify, you saw the Purify being used there, then landing the Shock Ultimate and securing the second kill. This is not looking good for Nova. They are now 1.5 thousand gold behind, and they lost the Abyssal Dragon as well. That was a devastating early game loss. It's by no means over though, Swing Phantom just need to stabilize. The number one thing they can do is spread out across this map, maintain the pressure they gained due to that fight. Zero Ace and the rest of Nova won't interrupt that. They need to do exactly this, threaten the minor objectives they're contesting for. Steel Spirit Sentinel, threaten all across the map and stop Swing Phantom from achieving that stabilized lead. Exactly, they have to come, they have to fight back, they have oh, to put pressure in, in a lane. That's a good nature's round, no, 08 misses the Agnix Rasp as well, Shaka is executed! A oh, double kill from Plague One, and another two kills to swing Phantom. 
that was just insane there and the missed Agni's grasp and the Benneth, the way Polo went in there, he landed a clutch branching out, hitting two of the opponents, CCing them, and easily collapsing rotation against the aggressive posturing of Nova Latin America here. And look at them, they are constantly putting pressure, perfect positioning by NTP in that bush there to basically push him away so they can easily take the stop tower. Phantom group up, group up here in the mid lane. Blake joins him. They want to be able to find pressure into the enemy jungle so that this Abyssal Dragon is an easy take. For now, they're just resetting it, trying to bait Nova into overextending defensively. Yeah, Nova cannot overextend. They're getting punished every single time here. So they need to try to get a gank. They need to, uh, you know, they try to catch NTB off guard because he's constantly um, overly pushing a little bit and putting himself in a very aggressive posture. Yeah. Oh, he missed it. And and they were really trying to grab NTP over there, but they could not make it happen. That yeah, happens. that's so unfortunate. He needed to land at Agni Grass. I mean, that is literally a win condition of Roxy there. So uh, hopefully they're able to do that. Um, but Shaka also has not really got in the game in terms of his Dark Dominions. And he can really shine if he lands it on the enemy team because none of them have Purify except for Xeroth. Um, and like I said, there's no Chalkner to counter him, so Mina is in really Polo, good Polo, pulled in, he has the Nature's Realm, that's it up for a stall, he'll make it to safety in the midst of all that. Zero Eight does have an excellent opportunity, Agni's Rust will be landed, but Seraph has the Purify, he'll get to safety. Yeah, that was just insane how Polo survived that. He was so close to death, that was a good oh, combo got... and chain CC. Ghost Walk keeps him safe, Hon nearby, Adol needs to get to safety, and he cannot. That means a lot of threat will continue to come through, particularly as Shaka misses an excellent Dark Dominion. Blake backing up and playing him so well. Now Zera, he's going to be the other threat, playing the top lane, he's got the wave clear though, so Nova can do nothing but back away. Yeah, Zerov has been really shining on this Malik here. He's always in the right place and the right positioning, landing a lot of good shock ultimates. And Polo, honestly, rotating constantly. Look at this. They got the mid lane tower. Polo is where he needs to be to help alleviate pressure that he they're seeing in top lane. And he's just rotating away. Shaka will be caught out in mid. Nice flying spirit does land. Sure, Monster might have been able to find some chase, but he's got the distance necessary. And in the meantime, Swing Phantom dedicate their pressure elsewhere. Man, Swing Phantom is just playing so well right now. Look at them. 5-0 lead, and they have a 4,000 plus goal lead as well. It's only seven minutes in the game, TJ. Yeah, and that is devastating. I don't know if there's response from Nova, but if there is a team that can work back leads against Swing Phantom, it is this Nova roster. They counted them out of it game one, and they made it darn close. Here's game two, a second opportunity for a miracle comeback. Yeah, this is so tough though. This is so much pressure for them. Oh man. Again, they're missing so many abilities. I don't know if they're nervous or they're tilted from the last game, TJ, but I'm noticing a lot of the members of Nova are missing all their ability. The Death Sights, the Flying Spears, the Agni Grass, the Power Surges. There's so many abilities being missed, and they can't do that in these team fights. No, you cannot afford to miss things like that. Polo doesn't miss a thing. He goes right into the midst of three, uses that Nature's Realm just to scare people back. Now the Sage goes up for grabs, Sir Monster will try and contest, can't do it, Dr. Me, it does land, Blake, very low, will fall, Ghost Walk from Adol, right into the midst, for the stall, Flicker is safety, Benji will find the kill as well, and TP shut down by an explosive KO. That was huge there, that was awesome what they did there, the way they were able to follow up and counterplay against the aggressiveness of Swing Phantom. This is exactly what happened in game one and they're doing it in game two here. They might come back in this game again and huge mispositioning by Blake there. Easily getting caught out and getting killed and then NTB also mispositioning and Munji knowing where he is, using the flicker, engaging oh, and securing that kill. Again, these Dark Dominions are found by Shaka. He was the player on Grack who looked so good game one. 
Now on Mina, he's looking very good as well. Yeah, and that's the that's the one thing is I'm not seeing a Dark Dominion really make a difference and turn the tide of these fights here. And that's something that Shaka really needs to do to land because he there's no flicker in game. I'm not seeing any type of Mina flicker Dark Dominion game. That's what she's known for, especially without a Chognar. That that's GG if you land a flicker Dark Dominion onto Blake or or home there. Shock will land. Zero scaring zero away. Back the cleave goes through as well. There's the chain hammer cyclone. He's burned down. Shaka caught out as well. Will fall as well. Sir Mosser and Manji need to play this back. They'll rain in some ranged bombardment, but Swing Phantom have eyes for the Dark Slayer. Yeah, that is such a awesome shock engage there, forcing Zero A to go in the wrong direction and allowing Hone to then follow up, cast Deep Smart, Chain Hammer Cyclone, slow him down, activate Deep Smart, and boom, Zero A explodes away. And this is not good for Nova. Dark Slayer falls, and Sing Spring Phantom can now go ahead and push the lead and push more towers down. No, indeed, this looks rather desperate for Nova. The team looks so good, game one is not out of it yet, but they certainly are very far behind. The level difference is stark, the gold difference desperate. Zero eight. It actually lands another Agni's Grasp. But again, though, that's such a good purify on Zaref. We've seen him pay dividends so many times. Essence of the Wind needs to be spent. Dark Dominion does land. Polo's trapped underneath the tower, but that tower will fall. Yeah, that was insane. Again, the Agni's Grasp should never be used on Zaref. He literally has a purify to counter it. So that's something that, you know, Zero Eight has to wait for the right moment to go in there. And look at this, another tower is going to fall. The Drake is dropped. Rank summoned in the mid lane as that tower falls. Wave will be cleared. It's just Nova trying to play defense and stop that Drake from arriving at their towers. This enraged Abyssin Dragon will be picked up as well. Swing Phantom focusing on scraping out a guaranteed victory. They're not feeling the need to get over ambitious. They remember what happened game one. <laughs> they definitely do, TJ. They're playing much more polished. They're only giving two deaths over. They didn't fall in a massive team fight here like last game where Nova was able to get four kills. And again, Shaka was a difference maker with the Grack last game, but I feel like the Mina isn't doing much for them. And, and they have a great opportunity to engage here. They just need to, to be decisive and follow up with a Mina engage. That's their only chance to get back in this game. They have to win the next fight decisively because they're almost one, uh, they're almost 10,000 gold behind TJ. That's massive once you fall 10,000 gold behind. Oh, this is a commit. Shaka and Adel both in. Chen Hammer Cycle will cut them off. Now the shot through. A last stab for Nova. A last stab for the last tap region. And it is not going well. Zero Master will fight Poke. Polo did fall, but that is all they earned back in exchange for a high ground tower. Yeah, that is just insane. More towers will fall here. This is looking so grim for Nova right Polo now. does get burned. Nice play, forcing out that Dark Blessing. Nicely done to scare Hodden back. You can still see damage is available. Sir Muster still playing up to the moment. Yeah, this is just devastating. Nova had so much hope in the last game, TJ, but this game is just not working out in their favor. They are completely getting decimated by Swing Phantom right now. The team fighting from Swing Phantom, the rotations, the objective game, everything is working out so well. Seven towers are a 13 minute mark, 10 kills to three and 10,000 gold lead. The only way Nova can come back is they have to just turtle, get level 15, get level parry, and then try to force a fight because Menji's only level 11 compared to Liliana. Blake 1 is level 14. That is a frustrating deficit to say the least. They didn't know they forced a recall onto Polo. He went back to base after the damage they de dealt, so they'll scare Blake 1 back as well. Nice pressure still found from Nova. Again, this is a team that will always take team fights. And that can be a blessing at times. Yeah, it definitely can be a blessing here.
Queen Phantom looking to make the home crowd proud here and continuing on and moving on against Nova America, sending them home and knocking them out. So much is on the line for Nova Lamera. Can they turn it around, TJ? Can they have Shock. the most epic comeback Shock is in AIC? It's like... I'm, I'm a little bit, or sorry, Adol's built Blitzblade. I'm yeah, a little bit confused that's... about that. Yeah, that's a very interesting build. Trying to get attack speed, which you should actually rush cooldown on Marja. Cooldown actually works a lot better because you want to spam her ability. That's what that's where all her damage come from. Because Dark Pulse and Soul Devourer have five to six second cooldowns in a late game, and Close Walk has a twenty four second cooldown. So the more you you capitalize and max the cooldown percentage, then the more damage output Marja does. So attack speed is definitely not something that that gives her a lot of damage. Yeah, that, that is very, very interesting. Um, I can see that there's a little bit more wave clear granted by it, and maybe the melee attacks pay dividends at the right times, but to be honest, I, I disagree with the build. It doesn't matter, though, because the Dark Slayer has just been picked up, and that means regardless of build, Nova Esports have a last stand. It'll be Polo as the target. Dark Dominion does land, he flickers to safety. And wow, look at that. They just don't have the damage. He's so tanky, TJ. Look at his build. He has, uh, it's only 15 minutes in the game, but that medallion of Troy is really helping him stay so tanky against. Shock. Oh, Seraph in Nature's Realm as well. Zero eight caught out. Hackney Scratch close wide. MTB dies. He gets one. He gets two. Underneath the core tower. Finally, the trade comes through, and it is only Adol in a 1v5 to save Latam's chances. And the AIC, he'll go down. And so will Nova as Swing Phantom win 2 0. That was just insane there. Nova, Latin America, they tried, they played their hearts out. They gave us the best series to, for the AIC so far. That was a crazy game one there that we saw. This game did not work out as well for them and they will be going home and Swing Phantom is proud there. They're gonna stay in and they know they're gonna move forward now. And Nova Latin America will not advance to the next group stage in Thailand. They will call it quits here in Vietnam. However, they have played so well for their region. So much talent on this roster in the whole region. I can't wait to see how Latin America will do the rest of the year and even next year as well. Both teams will walk out across the stage now and I will agree, that is a disappointing and early accent for Nova, but I do want to say Nova Esports definitely did prove that they can hang with the best there, uh, giving Swing Phantom a serious run for their money game one, and even moments of brilliance in game two, similar to their series the uh, day one. LATAM should be very proud of their representatives and very proud of the improvement that one season of Valor series did grant them. Yeah, and look at Swing Phantom here. This is the number that uh, two team. That's all I'm saying. There's swagger there. That's what a home <laughs> crowd the, earns you. Yeah, they're the number two team of Vietnam here. And Overclockers is the number three team. And honestly, both of them played so well so far in day one and day two. And Vietnam is a region you're, we're going to have to watch more closely here. Swing Phantom is showing up. And they'll be... Uh, I think, as you say, a team to watch going forwards, of course. My name is TJ, joined by Sui, who I think is below me currently. Um, and we have two more games to go today. Notably, of course, we're going to see both Nova uh, teams play back-to-back -back with Nova Esports Europe coming up next as they face off against XD Gaming. Or sorry, no, Nova Esports Europe facing off against Toyota Diamond Cobra. Uh, from the match we saw yesterday, that's going to be another difficult series for Nova. Let's talk though over the stats and break down what went wrong for Nova Latam in that last match. Yeah, they just fell so behind. Um, Marja, Adol, actually, I don't think 
it's one of the heroes he's comfortable with. He 